Hello and a very warm welcome to Equine Productions TV. And I'm very happy to say that joining me this afternoon live on EPTV is Pippa Funnel and the current badminton champion, Piggy March. Hello, team. Hello. Uh, virtual hug. Uh, virtual hug. <laughs> virtual hug. Virtual hug. Social distancing hug. Pip, how are you? How are you coping with, with the current conditions? Yeah, we're all very, very good. Um, we're coping well. I mean, we're so incredibly lucky to live in the country and have our four-legged friends to concentrate on. So I'm really appreciating that and uh, keeping us all sane. But um, yeah, no, we're, we're, we're doing okay. Obviously, we're frustrated, but we're, we're the lucky ones. And Piglet, what about you? I mean, you've got you've got so much going on at home. Is it business as usual? How how are you coping, you and Tom? Yeah, it is, to be honest. Business as usual. We still have 25, 26 horses in. Um, and so we're still training away, obviously, um, you know, keeping not doing too crazy. Um, and it's just great having, you know, the weather, like Pip says, we are so lucky in this situation to have the lifestyle that we do and be able to be out in the country and still have the horses to focus on and I've got a little boy Max and it's um, lovely to be able to spend some time with him to be honest is a positive for me um, but no we're all well um, and safe which is the main thing and aren't we lucky. We certainly are. And Pip, um, I mean, you've got obviously a huge business there with the Billy Stud. You're doing a lot of work with the Windrush Foundation. You're writing your books. You know, you're you're an extraordinary um, person because it's not just what we see when you go eventing. You've got so much else going on in your life. Well, I think it's important, isn't it, to try and be proactive. Um, yes, a huge amount going on with obviously the number of horses we have in the bully stud. We obviously aren't in a situation to just throw them all out into the field. We haven't got enough land. So we're making the, the, the most of this time really gone back to basics with our team of riders that are based here and um, concentrating on all that thing that you know that is so essential building that good foundation um with the horses and the riders and then i've been busy with my little per i set up poetry competition and i've loved doing that and also yes with with the um wind josh Fund foundation those young riders i'm trying to do things virtually with them and helping them and, and speaking to them um so we are keeping busy obviously we like many many people of course we're concerned you know our overheads are enormous um and we really rely on on producing and selling selling our horses and obviously the sales have really reduced well then non-existent at the moment and so it is a concern and i think the plan is we're hoping to have an online auction at the end of may but you know that that is the plan to put some four-year-olds in that but that's obviously a bit how more exciting that is so exciting so there'll be an opportunity for people even in lockdown to buy uh billy stud produce and be able to see them online and see them operate online presumably and then have the op opportunity to bid for them as well and that apparently in terms of like property sales at the moment has been mad so that's that's great news for fans well, I mean, you know, we've had four very successful sales over the last um, three years. And I think, you know, hopefully we've built up a name that that people will be interested in looking. OK, how it comes to then shipping those horses, we'll have to think about that. It might be a case that we have to keep them for, for longer and, and keep producing them for the people. But, you know, I think it is about, you know, young horses from the future still. And, and yes, I mean, it, it is something that w that's what we're aiming towards anyway. And fingers crossed, you know that it will come off. Pig, don't you love it when you listen to Pipsy? I think we might have built up a name. I mean, you and I, this she's been our hero all our lives, all our horsey lives. And she's like, well, we, Shut might up. Built, we might have built up a name. I mean, can you, when you think of, you know, what you and I know about Pips and, and obviously that amazing win at Burley. Um, we're going to talk about badminton clearly and your fantastic year last year. Those 14 international wins were just absolute, talk about bursting into an extraordinary bit of form. But but what's your reflections on Pip, you know, as a fellow athlete and as a, as, as a fellow competitor and a friend? Well, um, 
my first memories of, of Pip, and I was really lucky because my sister, Nini, was Pippa's head girl for five years. And so I could get behind the scenes at Mrs. Funnels a lot earlier than anyone normal probably could do. And so I was so lucky that as soon as I had met Pip and knew her, that um, she was always, you know, there to help if I got to events or ask for advice and that sort of thing. And I just have a picture um, that I still look at quite often of me sat on the ramp at Burley doing my first Burley. In front of the tears before I was about to start, absolutely oh, terrified. Sorry, can you just see Long Longwell busy with his very important guinea pig management, which is going on by. <laughs> uh, this is a crucial part of lockdown. Is Long Tall Will's uh, guinea pig management? Just come and say hello to your friends, Will. Sorry, I thought that very... was that he had when he was about twelve. Yeah, uh, well, it seems to have become <laughs> quite a priority here. Here oh, he is. You have to get a bit lower. You're too tall. Long yeah. will. Oh. How are you doing? Well, yeah, you've been riding horses, haven't you? I've ridden something, but now we're catching <laughs> guinea pigs because the dogs are going to yeah. eat them. I'm doing something wrong because I've still got my boots on. I'm riding. Hazelnut. You're busy aren't you? Yeah, I'm sure you're busier than normal. Daddy. Okay, Emmy's. I'm Daddy. 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 Um, sorry. Very important professional interview going on here, and uh, yeah. a slight guinea pig crisis. Apologies. Anyway, back to so that ramp and the first burley. <laughs> yeah, first burley, floods of tears on my ramp before I set off, absolutely terrified. And there was Mrs. Funnel with her arms around me, sat on the ramp, um, trying to comfort me. And, you know, ever since then, you know, I've just been was that very lucky. Was that, was that before I was about to be sick? <laughs> <laughs> yes, probably. Well, you look pretty cool at the time, but I certainly wasn't. But, um. Yeah, so, you know, obviously, you know, you're a legend. It's it's oh, hard stop. to it's looking at you exactly. So I like to Pip, admit, Pip, not see, when, we, when you <laughs> look at what Pig yeah. achieved last year, and that, well, obviously the highlight was the badminton win, and she's the current badminton holder. But you know, you and I and Tina and all of us giving her that big hug because you know for both of you I think when I was thinking about wh where to go with this and, and I wanted this to be a happy good chat but for both of you, you know for Pipsy building up to that Burley win last year you know it's 14 years since you had that major last major major win for you Pig the whole emotional roller coaster of 2012 the fallout of your relationship with Oliver the whole lot then culminated in that fantastic win at badminton but for both of you it's, it's not you know you're heroes and we, we, we know how good you are, but sport is not always an easy place, is it? No, <clears throat> no, it's not at all. And I think that's what was so special with Pigs when, you know, and I, as Piggy said, you know, I've known Piggy for a long time now. Obviously she was Nini's little sister. Um, so I've always held, held Piggy with great affection, um, you know, She's very dear to me and, and, and it was so special having also seen you know, the lows she was going through when, when the times got tough. <clears throat> and I think anyone, you know, I've been in the game, like William's been in the game for many, many years and, and you know, it is riding the storm and actually it's that those times you actually need your mates around you, similar to the situation we're going on, going through at the moment, that you can't just deal with it on your own. And I think, you know, saw a lot of what Pig was going through, through those tough days with, with horses going wrong. And she really looked like she should have been a medal contender at London Olympics and then losing those those two horses, sadly, you know, having injuries so they couldn't go. And she did go through a real tough time. And, and I think that's why when you when you go on that journey and see that journey and what people go through and, and I have such high sort of regards for Piggy and her talent and it, not just her lovely personality but her a huge amount of talent and and the one thing I love is the way she, she, she loves this she loves this pit oh, what God. she loves most is us all telling her how blinky yeah. lovely she is she loves oh, it yeah. she loves it well, well I, I hate I hate being it, told it. But anyway, but anyway, we picked so it was special. It was special because we we know how hard she worked to get there and get and it was brilliant. 
but it's all think, you know we're all, all here it's sport and it's horses and you put the two together everybody has a journey everybody has their purple patches everyone has a really rubbish time and it just depends when you have it have that you know bad time that then you suddenly appreciate so much of the good ones when they when they come and often some people have it the other way around that they have a great start in their career and then um the bad times come afterwards but it just so happened that I had a you know my bits was all at the beginning when things were starting to get right and then um but yes it's definitely made it so much more special like it would with Pips you know winning Burley after all that time um you know on a on a young horse a first timer that you thought yes was special but is it it's time you know it just makes makes the sport so great and I love the what we do you know that keeps us believing doesn't it or keep us dreaming that you just never know with horses if you just want it you just keep going at it and the good days do come you work hard enough and keep believing for sure and I mean I think you know Pip we look back on those three Babington wins um, obviously the two big European championships that you won all those teams that you've been part of the Olympic medals which Babington win really stands out for you? <laughs> they were all so long ago now um I mean I obviously for sure the first one was incredibly special I think very special because that took a bit of a long time coming because obviously in 99 Rocky won the European Championships we won the European Championships and then you sort of wanted to go straight back to badminton the next year but because of the Olympics we in Sydney they they said they didn't want me to run at Babington, so he missed that year. Then the following year um, was foot and mouth year. So that was 2001 after the Olympics. So that was another year that we missed Babington. So it was frustrating that I had to wait so long to get into Babington. And then I remember it was it was special because I had a, I had a bad fall and I had a leg put in plaster at Belton. So I thought I wasn't going to get to Babington. And I actually got the plaster taken off because it was just sort of chips in my ankle so I actually couldn't ride and I I relied on the guys keeping up the fitness work and and so it was a touch and go whether I was actually going to get to compete there and luckily I did and I had to be driven around the course rather than walk it and and so that was a very very special win was that the year that William was second yes 2002 he had quite a lot of seconds to you <laughs> yeah but he won he's won two Listen, he's another, he's another of our heroes. And obviously, like when we were discussing the journey and things, I mean, that's why we all, that's to me why I have been in this sport so long because of the friendships that we've got over the years. And, and as, as you said, you, you, your husband, I mean, he's a very true dear friend and, and we rode the journey with you guys over that terrible yeah. situation yeah. When, when, when he wasn't good after that fall. So... And you certainly we're did. lucky in the sport to have such camaraderie really 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 lucky but um, hey can I just quickly say for, for you last year you know there was there was no point really until you actually did it when it looked like you were going to win did it it was it's just such an extraordinary extraordinary competition like even as Oliver jumped the last show jump that you it still was not clear that you were going to win. I mean, how, what, no. sort of, can you, what are your memories of that of that competition last year? Um, memories of it, to, to start with, it was a bit of a blur, really, the whole week. Doing Kentucky the week before and everything is, is pretty hardcore. I've never done that before. But you are, you know, flying overnight and coming back and having two of the biggest competitions of the year back to back. The starters, I found it all, the logistics of everything quite, you know, big and intense um she's a very you know she's a she's a funny little mare and I, you, you can't sit and say yes you know she's clearly going to be a having champion every phase you know as good as she is I just have to very much stay in my bubble and keep my head down and just get every box ticked the whole way through it rather than thinking yes I could do this and it was just very much a week a week like that but I just remember at the end of what I'd done of being so proud like I'd won my own personal band whatever had happened because um everything to me was a, a clear round apart from my two seconds over the time which I thought might have been even more expensive but um you know and the 
the proudness that you get as a trainer, as a rider and all, all the rest of it come into one of what that little horse had done, achieved that week. So um, when come second, I once I'd finished, I was I was happy. I felt that I'd done, you know, we'd done all we could do. And, you know, Oliver had such a big margin, to be honest, on his lovely horse. And you thought actually all week it was Oliver's week with his amazing and, you know, how the week was going. So um, it was a shock to be honest but a, a wonderful one and and with the margins now in the sport so close um you just you know I was luck had fallen my way there was someone that looked down and said you know what today's your day and you know it's still just the feeling now is absolutely bloody brilliant and <laughs> I read a really brilliant article uh, that you did afterwards, which talked about, you know, we've talked about 2012 and the, and the nightmare and the place it took you yeah, to. Yeah. But then getting pregnant and giving your horses to other riders and going to visit other riders a lot and other systems and actually thinking, hang on, I've been in my bubble where I've been beating myself up and overanalyzing yeah. and being black and miserable. Can you just talk about what you <laughs> took from that time, that nine months of pregnancy where you couldn't ride but you yeah. were suddenly out there in, in everybody else's space and what, what you learned from that and what I, cause it, it really dawned on me then now how I see you react in a competition environment that, that that's ta you've taken so much from that. Yeah. A massive amount more than I could believe. To be honest. I mean, I think we all, if we want to be any good, put a lot of pressure on ourselves. We are our biggest critics of our, of ourselves. And, you know, you can, it can be a negative, um, to be honest, like I, I would have bad dreams of a horse going lame or not even, you know, wondering how I'm going to canter it, how you're going to get a horse, but you know, everything. And actually just sitting on the other side of the fence and taking your horses to other riders, going to events, um, sitting there watching, we all have exactly the same insecurities of whether this horse is going well enough, whether, you know, we've done the right thing for our owners, whether... Um, you know, what our plan should be, um, you know, and you're forever just questioning yourself or wondering whether it could be better or, or you know, never stop learning. And even that, you know, I was so lucky, again, I keep saying lucky, but I had brilliant riders riding for me. Pippa, Tina, you know, I would speak to people more often. And, you know, I think it was even the, the year that Willie Mullins had three favourites out of Cheltenham or something. And it was an Olympic year again, and Tim Price missed out with Wesco that he thought was going to win an individual medal. You know, just lots of little things that quietly puts you back, you know, because you wouldn't, I'd never sit there and say, none of those guys know what they're going on about or aren't absolutely brilliant at what they do and have my full respect. So, um, you know, it just starts turning <coughs> things a bit around and, and just giving you a bit of confidence. I went to other um, riders' yards, a week at Carl Hester's or Andrew Nicholson's and you know just took courses there to be working pupils just to just to keep learning and and keep figuring things out and the whole circle of it was a very reassuring um time for me that yeah. you know you just got to keep believing and keep going and you know everybody has exactly the same problems mine was just very high profile at a very at the worst time possible of your life of a home Olympic. So it would just yeah. enhance so much more than any other time would be. Do you um, think, Pipsy, I'm just going to follow on from that, Pipsy, because do you think that I'm finding that this time, I mean, I, 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 I'm I, permanently, literally driving like a maniac from place to place, as are you, as are you, Pig. Are you finding that this time where we are, be, are forced to be in one space, that I'm taking so much, I mean, it sounds a bit kind of, but I'm taking so much learning from this, you know, and just how I conduct myself, how I am with my children, what I want from my life, how I'm, you know, do, are you finding that, Pip? You know, from what Pigs is taking, you've probably <clears throat> never been made to be in one space like this, have you, for a long time? Yeah, I mean, I mean to, to be honest, the, the, the odd thing is it's, it's, it's the first time in, in my life I've not had a sort of obvious goal to aim at you know we don't we haven't got any goals at the moment for the season you know when you've been spending your whole career eventing and doing competitions that in itself is strange I mean I would say 
for sure I think it makes you take a step back take time to think I mean I know it sounds silly but I was sorting out through some old photographs and things and and reflecting back on the past and some just incredible horses I had and I really I mean William got back home and I was sort of in a mess really because of, of course I reflected and looked back on them with appreciation and how lucky I've been but obviously sad messed up I'd missed so many of these you know the rocky you know obviously what he did oh I've lost the sound we can hear you but oh, we, we, we've oh, done the, the same then. Yeah, we've done the same and ended up being very emotional. It's really funny, isn't it? It's really triggered. Exactly, We've had exactly the same. Now, we've got a question in for you guys, which is what happens behind... This comes from Matthew, who's emailed in, and he says, what happens behind the scenes when you win at badminton? Do you have time to celebrate with your team or is it all a blur of interview and things? And what about the evening? <laughs> well... In my case, I mean, yes, it is, it's, it is all a blur, isn't it? I mean, you know, the, the moment in itself of actually winning is absolutely incredible. But then often by the time you've been to the press, seen all that and done all that, there's every most of the people have left. I mean, all your mates are, have gone. And that's where that photo that um, you put up earlier that we all waited behind to have a drink with Pig because there's nothing worse than getting back from the press tent and everyone's gone. <laughs> and and we, we all, we all, or most of us always have horses to drive home from the event. So, um, you know, so you, you can't celebrate and have a big party afterwards, but, but the party comes late at a later date. I think I had a party, a couple of friends of ours had a marquee actually after the Primrose Pride one and, and, and they happened to have a birthday and we had a big party in that marquee they let us use and no piglet. She can tell uh, you about her celebration. Yeah, yeah let's uh, hear about our yours. Locals are, our locals are all, because um, we didn't get back to, from badminton till nine o'clock at night and um, we must have had about 20, 25 people here when we got home and uh, up our lane which is about a mile long there was carrots and apples the whole way up um spelling out tilly which is the near Camira's stable name and uh queen tilly bean and year of the pig hashtag year of the pig or something all sorts of things laid out in carrots and apples all the way up so it's pretty cool and then um we partied away for a few hours but you're you're so excited that you're exhausted at the same time but you're buzzing for weeks afterwards but then we were Aston the Wolves two days later I, I think I ran about 16 horses over the next four days from Wednesday through to Saturday at Chatsworth and Aston and everywhere else so it's, it was crazy you don't have much time which is nice now like listening to you guys say so you go back through all your pictures and I've done exactly the same thing and it's actually really cool to sort out and and see the lovely old horses that you once had and you know, just looking back when you've had years more experience and going back to look at old videos or whatever. And um, it's just, it's nice to actually have time to do and appreciate things. To be honest. I know. We've got another question in from Joanna in Chichester. And she says, how do you know whether a horse has potential at the very highest level? Is it <coughs> obvious or do some develop beyond your initial impressions? Do you have any examples? That's a really nice, really nice question. P um, Pig, do you want to go first with that? Oh yeah, okay. Um, yes, a lot can a lot can surprise you without doubt. Um, and it's you know that's part of the fun of working with horses in the first place. I think if we all knew what we were buying at the age of four, it would our our job would be very easy. Um, but it's not. We're all trying to do the same thing and. Um, there's surprises, good and bad ones, and disappointments. We think we bought the best thing, best one ever, and but he doesn't enjoy the job, or is is doesn't work with you as easy as some. Um, and I think that's just part of the journey, and and being able to give the horses the time. Um, but it it varies the whole time, which I think is the the excitement of the whole thing and the the fun and what keeps us. And Mrs. Funnel, you especially so nuts. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, yeah maybe, I mean, you're looking at so many young horses. And 
we know you build this kind of extraordinary relationship with you because you are all about the horses. I mean, we're all all about the horses, but you, it certainly is something I know you're concerned as the sport develops and it's very much your focus to educate young people into treating each horse as an individual. You take it to the next level, but also you're in a position where you're looking at so many young horses with such incredible potential because obviously William is bre and you are breeding so many horses, but is it always the obvious ones that are the stars? Not at all. I mean, <clears throat> to me, I mean, it's it's what's the most important nature or nurture. You know, it's you can. Yes, for sure. We need to have the you know, we want to look at the correct confirmation, everything else. But so much of it, you can say, is what's in their brains, what's in their hearts. But then also that develops as you grow that partnership. You know, time and time again, you can have young horses that you think aren't going to have the 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 brain or they're not going to work with you and the more that partnership builds up the more trust they get the more they start working with you and and that is what's so fascinating and and yes I've been incredibly lucky the horses I've had but I would say an awful lot of them have been from a very very young age so I haven't had over the years to be honest have very few horses have been bought for me you know they've been more young horses have been sent or we've bred them and yes I'm probably stubborn you know I don't like to give up on them you know I, I put my trust in them and I, I, I devote a lot of time to it and, and possibly pig headed I, I, I want to get the best out of every horse and I, I'm really saying it doesn't mean to say the best is going to be winning badminton it's still about my duties I want to do the best I can for that horse and it is absolutely unbelievable I find over over the years what horses and even my horses very often the ones that I haven't necessarily um thought are going to be superstars have actually been the ones that have been my best horses well I've got a question for you both from Sally who sent this on email thank you Sally to both what is the single greatest feeling you've ever had sat on a horse uh pig you go first Oh God! Oh God! Ooh. Not have practiced these. Oh, single greatest feeling. Yeah. Oh, they one thing. Uh, Pipsy, you go. Can you okay, you answer Pip, that one? Pip, you go first. Well, it, it is a very difficult question to answer because, to me there isn't a single greatest moment but to me the special moments are when exactly what Pink said earlier when you really feel that the horse has really tried and given it's all for you and and you feel that there's that unbelievable connection um and to me that's that's what's so incredibly special and if I'm honest every day when I walk into my barn what's special to me is the horses wickering that's what's special to me because I know they know when I walk into the barn you know that that's that's see, what's that's to me I love it <laughs> love it I love it when they scratch that's your why we love you that's why we You're love you cute. You're cute. <laughs> I've got three memories of Pipsy at badminton how about yeah. that season? Yes, you are, yeah. But the first one I might have got wrong. Did you fall off Sir Barnaby at the Vicarage V? Yes. Yes, I remember that. And your little yellow colours. He yeah. got his legs back a bit. He did jump it, but you got caught in it, on it. Thanks for that. Thanks for that, Pete, yeah. reminding me of that. You fell, you fell off at the gates the same year on two horses you, at the same time. You're fence. just reminding me of all my falls. <laughs> Thanks. These this are, is crazy. That's a special feat, though. I mean, that, that's good going. But you ended up in hospital on the second one, so that wasn't so cool. No, no, I didn't. I didn't. I'm going to correct got, you. you. I'm going to correct got, her there. Go on, then. I'm you correcting her there, because I had to go to oh. hospital after the first fall because I got studded in the arm, and, 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 and they flew me in a helicopter air ambulance because they wouldn't they didn't think I'd be back because of the traffic and I ended up getting back having my arm stitched up got on the second horse which was Cornerman that was leading after the dressage or second after the dressage dressage went amazing 
came to the same gate in Hunston's close, left the same leg, and I had exactly the same fall. And that was the year that was talking about ups and downs in the sport. That was to, uh, the year between two of my wins. Oh my goodness. Thanks. Have you got a positive? Have you got a positive memory though, Pig? That's that's yep. two. You yep. said you had three. Yep. I know. One? But we're on about the ups and the downs. And then one year you weren't riding, but you were commentating, and you were speaking in front of the cameras. And your naughty horsey dentist had given you a very rude ringtone on your telephone and you were talking to the camera and your phone started ringing and this rude um, ringtone and you were like oh my god oh my god that's my focus um the dial the ringtone's too too rude and so you no, had to it off the camera and i'm gonna have to say what the ringtone was now yeah, so what every was time, if you don't want every, to know your dirty things. No, it wasn't, it wasn't that rude. Every time it was my mad horse and dentist, Chris Warren, but every time my <laughs> phone rang, it it sound, it was a voice saying, help, help, I'm drowning, <laughs> I'm at the bottom of the bucket. And well, so that's all right. You didn't need to run away for that one then, that was all right. And then you won, you, you won on Rocky, the first year it was really wet. It was like, it just, pissed with rain all night and all day of cross country day and like he was amazing was so we've right? got another question we've got another question got from megan in devon megan says is there some rivalry between top level riders or do you all get on really well uh i'm gonna i'm not gonna chat about that one i'll leave that one to you two <laughs> um yeah of course there's rivalry but i think that's healthy and that will uh, improves us you know, I know if I want to beat Mrs. Funnel, you know, I have to keep upping my game. Or, we can't you know, beat you, Piglet. Oh, shut up. You can. You do on a regular basis. No, um, once. So you go, it's, it's, help, it's healthy. You respect. You, you're forever watching other riders in the warm-ups and collecting rings. And, and it's a sport that you never wish you can't wish anyone bad because it's a very, you know, it's a high-risk sport. We're all in it in the same way and you know it's a very leveling sport as well we've all got our ups and downs so it's never like you wish any any anyone bad but you're um you always try to beat everyone all the time but it keep, keeps us healthy um us do, you, try do, to you think, do you think that it's quite similar like the difference between eventing and show jumping is very similar to the difference between national hunt racing and flat racing or rugby and football because the element of risk that you guys face every day when you yeah. go out means that it is a fantastic leveler because you have yeah. you know it but for, if somebody has an injury but for the grace of god it's not you or or someone very close to you yeah totally i think it's very similar and it's um it's not you know the business side of things is so do it's not so as much money related as well the other thing it's higher risk and it's not you know the, not financially very rewarding yes exactly going for your million pounds to win you know whatever it is arc and oil hundreds of thousands for winning jumping class or a flat race i don't know but it just seems that the business side would be different there as well the money at stake who's who, who's Pippi, can you say who's your biggest rival I mean, you're, you, you always seem to be friends with everyone. I mean, I know you're our dearest friend from forever, but, but um, is there rivalry? Is there someone you're like, hmm, gums out? Well, I'm going to say, I'm going to actually be very boring now, and I don't know whether it's because I'm older and, um, but I actually, I, I am competitive, but I actually feel as though I don't have any rivals at all. I just feel as though I want to just, do my best performance on whatever horse I'm on and if that means that's good enough to win then I'll take that but I don't ever go to a competition thinking I've got to beat so and so I've got to beat so and so and maybe maybe that's an age thing maybe you know I'm sort of excited but I but in a way I do I think I, it's more about my own bettering my own performance yeah. and if that's good enough to then win brilliant I um, think that's a good, that's a really good training um um whatever the word is as well when i'm trying to, to help people teach people young riders coming up especially with this whole social media you know everything and all the rest of it you can be so 
you lose focus and it's staying in that bubble, your own bubble with your horse and taking your training to your competition and actually the end result is is a bonus you get there at the end of the day and have a look at it rather than thinking or oh, i wonder what they're doing and i wonder what so and so is doing and i want to be them and you're wasting energy on things that are not relevant rather you know than... i heard a very good thing about that when we, i was away working on the hong kong races and an old guy had brought a sprinter over and he said i've got that feeling of the harvest and i was like what are you talking about and he goes well what, you know if you're a farmer and you look over the field and they started to cut their hay or they're starting to cut their thing you're like you sh i should be doing that i should be doing that and he said you know when your hay should be cut and you know when your wheat should be cut and you must stick to your timings he said i'm here in hong kong there's all these posh guys and they're suddenly galloping their horses and i'm thinking i should be galloping my horse I should be but I know yeah. I don't gallop my horse so I mustn't get drawn into the harvest and yeah. I always think of that I think is a really nice yeah. way that's, <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's a really really good point um, and mm. I've been saying that with the with the Windrush riders I spoke to one of the girls this morning and she was sort of struggling a little bit with being motivated because she hasn't got any goals and I said forget about your short-term goals I said you've got to stay motivated <clears throat> and and spend the time to improve yourself because the goals might be five years away I said the time spent now and and yes even listen I'm 52 years old I gave my girls here a lunch lesson yesterday and afterwards I thought right I'm gonna make myself have one too and I had a lunch lesson yesterday and this morning the horses have gone better because I've made myself have, have a lunch les lesson yeah and if that yeah. makes then when you start competing bettering that performance that personal performance and and several ins inspirational things i've seen over the years of of people you know trainers in athletics saying it's not about beating so and so it's just you know if you better your performance each time and try to set that as your goal whatever level if you keep bettering it bettering it bettering it sooner you're going to the gap's going to close and then you're going to overtake other people Guys, you've been, as ever, I mean, you, we could all sit here chatting with a glass of wine for another four hours. It's always such a treat um, to catch up, especially at the moment where I haven't seen your smiley faces for far too long. But um, if you can just get, I think you've probably given it, but for everyone in lockdown, some people obviously can't see their horses, which is really, really tough, and they can't get into the yards to see them. For NHS and nurses and workers who are working so hard, um, have you got a message for those people who, you know, we know we're lucky, we know we've got some goals long term, but for people who maybe who are stuck at home or a message for our frontline NHS workers? There are heroes. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go, yeah. Pig. You go, Pig. You go. That's all I have to say. They are our complete heroes, though, aren't they? Uh, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. I mean, such huge admiration for them all those people that are keeping the country running and we are lucky, but also, you know, yes, the last word needs to be thanking the National, National Health Service, but I think within the sport, we need to thank our sponsors too. And it's a tough time for them, tough time for equestrian businesses. And, but, but as, as you said, we're all behind the NHS and I've been saved by the bell. <laughs> Girls, love you so much, stay safe. And um, we'll see you on the other side. Thank you so much. And thank stay you for all joining us here live on Equine Production TV. And uh, stay safe. Thank you to the NHS. Support your NHS and stay at home. And we'll see you all when this madness and terrible time is over. So thank you.